Shalom Aleichem, everybody. We're going to learn the Sicha on Shabbos HaGadol, in Chelek Yud Beis. It's on page 33. Yiduim Divrei HaShalah. The words of the Shalah are well known. Shaparshi Yisateire Shayachesein L'Nyanei Azman B'Shonah Shakaira Naisan. The Parsha of the week is connected to the time when the Parsha is read. But Pisa, Gamben Nidin the Dom Parsha Sav. The same is true over here in our case regarding the Parsha of the week, which is Parsha Sav. She become a become a shonim koyin oisav b'shabbos agadol. Many many years in the Kriyas, like this year actually, we read it in Shabbos agadol. Yesh kesher v'shayches b'neim. There is a connection between the Parsha, Parsha Sav, and the Shabbos, which is a special Shabbos, being Shabbos agadol. The Yuvans, uh, to understand the connection the Rebbe first brings, first let's examine the source of Shabbos HaGadol, the way the Alta Rebbe describes it in Shulchan Aruch, and in the end of the Sikha, the Rebbe will come back to Parashat Tzav, to the connection to Parashat Tzav. So the Alta Rebbe explains the reason why this Shabbos is called Shabbos HaGadol. So the Rebbe here quotes almost fully in the Sif, in Simon Tov Lamed, where the Alter Rebbe explains the Sinyan. Shabbos, Shalifneya, Pesach, Koyren, Oisoy, Shabbos HaGadol. The Shabbos before Pesach, we refer to it as Shabbos HaGadol. L'fishenasaboy nes Godl, because a great miracle happened this Shabbos. Shapesach Mitzrayim hoya mekchoi mibaasil achaydash. The Pesach in Mitzrayim, they had to take it, prepare it on Yud Nisn. That day and that year fell out on the Shabbos. When Yidin were taking their carbon Pesach, the lamb, preparing it for the carbon. So the Bechayr Mitzrayim gathered by the Yidin and asked of them, what are they doing? What's the story with this lamb that all the Yidin are taking to their homes? Amrulahem, the Yidin answered, Zevach Pesach Hashem, Sheyarag Bchayre Mitzrayim. This is a carbon that we're going to be bringing because the Abish is going to kill all the Bchayre of Mitzrayim. So what happened then? Halchu Bchayre Mitzla Viseim Vel Paray. So the Bchayre went to their fa- fathers and to Paray. Levakish Mem Sheyishol Chayes Yisrael to request that they should send the Eden to save their lives. V'leir Atzu. Paray didn't want to send the Eden. Vasa Bchayre Simon Melchame Vahargu Harbe Mehem. So the Bechayris went, they took their weapons and they started fighting with their, with their parents, with Padai, to let the Yidin go from, uh, from its time so they won't die. This is the meaning of the Pasuk, that the Bechayrim of Mitzrayim went and were fighting against their own nation, against the Egyptians themselves. So while the Yidin were preparing the Karban Pesach, the Mitzrayim were fighting amongst each other, and many of them got killed. So this is what was established in all generations to commemorate this miracle on Shabbos. And this is why it's called Shabbos HaGadol. Why wasn't it established to commemorate this incident, this miracle, on the 10th day of the month? Like all the Yom Tevim were commemorated. So the answer is, On Yud Nisan, that's the day which is the yard site of Miriam. And it's a day that it's established as a fast day. When it falls out on a weekday. There's a list of Tanesim besides the Tanesim that we fast all year. Throughout the cycle of the year, there are other Tanesim mentioned there, different days, and one of them is the day that Miriam passed away. So because it's established as a day of a fast, so therefore it's not a day to commemorate the Ness that happened on this day. So instead of it being commemorated on Yud Nissen, like all other Yom Tovim are commemorated in the date of the calendar of the month, it's commemorated on Shabbos, which that year Yud Nissen was on a Shabbos. It's all love. So the Rebbe asks the following questions on this halacha. Aleph, the first question is, Admar Azokim Adayik, the Alter Rebbe is very specific and says, Shanasa by Nes Godl. There was a great miracle that occurred on this day. Hainu, the reason why the Alter Rebbe mentions it's a Nes Godl, and the Rebbe points out in the Ha'ara, not everybody says Nes Godl. Taisva says Nes Godl, the Torah says Nes Godl, but a Shulchan Aruch, it does not mention Nes Godl. 
The Alter Rebbe is medayik to choose the version that it was a Nes Godel. And the reason is, Shal Pizei Yuntak Lo Makoyin Eisei Shabbos HaGodl. This gives a better explanation why the Shabbos is called a Shabbos HaGodl, commemorating the Nes Godl. Although, even if it was just Stama Nes, so the Shabbos could be called a Shabbos HaGodl because of the Nes that occurred. But still, this is an added explanation why the Shabbos is called Shabbos HaGodl, because it wasn't Stama Nes that we're commemorating, but it's a Nes Godl. Aval... If we take a look at what the actual Ness was, this needs an explanation. What's so unusual, what's so great about the Ness? If you look at what actually happened, it doesn't even seem to be a Ness altogether. It seems to be a natural chain of events that just makes sense. After the B'chayrim heard what was going to happen, and they saw all the Nisim and the Makis that happened before, and they knew that this is going to develop if they don't take uh, matters into their own hands, so they went and they fought against their uh, parents even, against Pare, to try to let the Eden go to save their life. What was the Ness about this? Um, looking at another aspect of this Ness, any benefit that Eden would derive of this miracle. Nothing great came to Klal Yisrael at all. Even after many Mitzrayim were killed, the Eden was still not able to leave Mitzrayim. And first, he had to wait for the nest of Makis Pchayris to actually happen, and other preparations until Eden would finally leave. Hainu. So therefore, to say it even more, not only wasn't there any great benefit to Yidin from what happened at that point on that Shabbos, the Yidin had no benefit of this infighting amongst the Mitzrayim when the Pchayrim went out to fight against their fathers and against Paray. What did the Yidin gain of this? Why is this stand out that we commemorate this on Shabbos and refer to it as Shabbos Hagol? Second question, Bay. So the Rebbe gives a short introduction here. Ze shatainis she nikve biyom de misis miriam. Bekoichal litchais es kviyusai shal zikaron anes li yom ashabbos. The fact that because the day of Yudnissen was established as a fast day, and that is able to push off the commemoration of the Ness, that it should be instead on Shabbos. And the Rebbe here now parenthetically explains what happened here. Hainu, meaning. The Yud Nisan was established by Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim that this is going to be the day to commemorate the nest that happened on Yud Nisan. Originally, it was established on Yud Nisan. Then, after Miriam passed away, and this was her yard site, and they established a fast day, So then what happened is, only after that it was pushed off to Shabbos. So the Rebbe says, move on. The fact that this fast day can push it off, that's understood. We find that the Koyach of Atainis that's been established, that's mentioned in Megillus Tainis, can push off even the Isra of fasting on a Shchidish, you can fast on a Shchidish because of something that it comes to commemorate. So we see how powerful it is, these fast days, that even on a Shchidish you fast. So it's understood that it can push off the uh, commemoration of the miracle that happened on Yud Nisan. And we push it off to Shabbos because of the fast day for Miriam. The Rebbe in the Ha'ara, there's a long Ha'ara here, one of the points that Rebbe mentions in the Ha'ara is that when Miriam passed away, so this was eventually the cause for Moshe and Ara not to enter into Eretz Yisrael. When the water was taken away from Yidin, and then the story that happened with Moshe Rabbeinu hitting the rock, the, the story of May Meriva, that brought that Moshe Rabbeinu should die and pass away in the Midbar, that is, and not be able to enter into Eretz Yisrael. So Miriam's passing, her yard site, is a beginning of a tragedy that Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron Akkoyim didn't enter into Eretz Yisrael. And that's why it's a very, very important fast day. So therefore, the Rebbe, let's go back inside the Sikha. So we find that when there's a Tainus, even on Rishchidosh, you push off the usual status of Rishchidosh, that you don't fast on it. And the Rebbe continues inside, Sha'asal is Anas by Minadin. Rishchidosh is a day that usually you're not allowed to fast. And nevertheless, certain times you fast on Rishchidosh, the days that are mentioned in uh, Megillah's Tainus and mentioned in Shulchan Aruch. 
Kolsh came in it in the dawn, so most definitely over here in our case, the Koran and Nest of Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereyem. Commemorating this Nest of Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereyem, of Yud Nissen, She'ein Ayala Minik. The whole Indian of commemorating this Nest is only a, a Minik. The Rebbe says this is the way the Alter Rebbe refers to it, as the Minik of Shabbos HaGadol. So it's a Minik to commemorate this Nest. So definitely, the fact that this is the yard site of Miriam, it could push off this Minik. The Rebbe adds another point. And you could even say more so, even though it's a Deichik, but it could be said even more so. For whatever reason, This whole Indian of commemorating the nest that happened of Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereyim wasn't established immediately when Yidin came out of Mitzrayim. It was established later. And it was established after it was already the yard site of Miriam. So it was Lachatchila established for Shabbos and not for a city of Nisan, not on Yud Nisan. Aval, however, Adayin Tzadach Bir Bepnimi Yisan Yonim. We still need to understand there has to be a deeper connection over here. There has to be a deeper reason to this. Mikivin the Zikaron Anes, Mitzad Atzmoy. Commemorating the nest that happened on Yud Nisan. Lulay Inyin the Misas Miriam. If not for the fact that it was the yard side of Miriam. Tzorech Lekovei Basiri Lechaydesh. It should be established on Yud Nisan. Kederech Shenikvu Kol HaMoyedim. The way all Yomim Tevim are established. Heich Yitochen Lashanais Oifim Kviyiz Ekorin Zem Kviyiz Kol HaMoyedim. So how is it and why is it that we're pushing off and we're changing the regular way to establish the way we commemorate in all other Yomim Tevim to completely push off the zikaron of this day, and to establish it on a different day, to push it off to Shabbos, because of a completely unrelated thing that later happened on this day, the fact that Miriam passed away on this day. Miriam passes away 39 years after the Ness happens, and so it was pushed off later. Afterwards, if we're going to accept the fact that it was Lachatchila established when they came out of Mitzrayim and Asiri bin Nisan, then they, 39 years later, push it off that it should be on Shabbos and not Asiri bin Nisan. So Apinigla, it's understood why it's all. This is understood. We find even when you get to the Shchidish that you're allowed to fast on the Shchidish. If it's something, if it's a good reason to fast on the Shchidish. But B'pnimi Yisan Yonim, there has to be a deeper reason why we're pushing off the commemoration of the Ness of Shabbos HaGadol to Shabbos and not on Yud Nissen, and it's not just a side, unrelated reason that's causing this. So the Rebbe explains. So first the Rebbe is going to get back to answer Shaila Aleph, which was, what's Bechlal so great about this Ness of Lamaki Mitzrayim Bechoreya? The Abir Bechalze, the explanation in all of this is as follows. Nisim Rabbim Nasud Neisro B'Meshech HaDeiris. Many Nisim occurred to Yidin throughout all the generations. And Yidin, through these net nisim, were saved of the Goyim, of their haters. And every generation, there's always miracles. The, the entire existence of Klal Yisrael is a miraculous existence. Many of these nisim include also in many cases where many, many of the Goyim were killed as it was by Kris Yamsof, or whether by Purim, or whether Chanukah, Vachulu, and in other cases. So all of those fall into one category. But over here there's something unique about the Ness of Shabbos HaGadol that stands out. Omnam, however, here, the greatness of the miracle, why this is different than all other Nisim. The Mitzrayim were being killed by their own, the infighting. The Bechayre Mitzrayim themselves killed the Mitzrayim, they killed their own family, their own brothers. That they were killed by their own Bechayre. This is something we don't find in any other time that in the situation where the Ebeshire wants to save Eden, he brings about that the Goyim, the Goyim that they should kill one another. <clears throat> this takes place even while the Eden are still in Golis Mitzrayim. Upare betokfoy, and Pari is still at its, at its strength. Atke de kach, so much so, shafila meishra beinu, ubeisa yeisi bechori af olov, 
Cholak lekovet malchus. Moshe Rabbeinu at this point, and even when Moshe Rabbeinu was showing anger to Pare, still gave him his honor. Upare u mitzvim mienu b'chol toikev l'shalech es Yisrael. They still completely refused, completely, to send Yidin out of Mitzrayim. And still, boy bizman, at the very same time, bikshu b'chayre Mitzrayim. The b'chayrem of Mitzrayim, the firstborn, which also represents ha toikev to Mitzrayim, the strength of the nation of Mitzrayim, she yishlechu es Yisrael, that the Yidin should be sent out of Mitzrayim. And they were demanding this of their parents and of Paroi. And they demanded it so strongly. That they were ready to go out to fight and they killed amongst each other many just in order to send Yidin out of Mitzrayim. So this is something which is unusual. This we don't find by any other, other Nisim throughout history, whether it's Hanukkah, Purim, when Yidin were fighting against the Goyim and killed many of them in a supernatural way, and other instances. Here, amongst the Mitzrayim themselves, they began fighting with each other with the purpose to send Yidin out of Mitzrayim. So therefore, who Nes Godl Shalehoye Kamoye Bishar Nisim. This is a great Nes that we don't find similar to this by any, any of the other Nisim that happened throughout history. Hatzalas Yisrael midei seneim, saving the Eden from the Goyim. Benes de Kriis Yamsov put him by the Nes of Kriis Yamsov or put him. Haise ba'ifin, asha seini Yisrael nitvu bi Yamsov. So the enemies of the Eden, they drowned in the Yamsov. Nergu, they were killed. Oishe sholta Yehudim behem. Or in the case of put him, the Eden were able to rule over them and kill them. The Bechayrim of Mitzrayim themselves, Ubiyesum Betokfom, Ubetaikif the Klippas Mitzrayim, they were at their strength, at their highest point of strength, and the, the point the Taikif of Klippa of Mitzrayim, Nilchamushi Yishlochos Yisrael, they were fighting that Eden should be sent out of Mitzrayim. So the Rebbe says, This is Dugmas, is Hapchach Sheikhel and Ahira. This is a concept where the darkness itself is fighting for the Eden to leave. The very darkness gets transformed into light. They themselves are fighting for this. And this is something, that's why it's called a Nes Godel. It's an unusual kind of a, an occurrence that happened over here, right before the Eden eventually left Mitzrayim. Lotais Vizbiya. The Rebbe continues to add another detail to the greatness of the Nes. Why is this nest referred to as a great nest? It's unusual, this nest. In Yonishal Ness, what's the idea of a nest? When there's a change in nature. If the change of nature is not only in nature of the world, if this is the standard and the nature in the standard of Teireh, the standards of Teira are much stronger standards that have much a much stronger nature than the nature of the world. So if we're going to break a nature that there is there and a standard that there is usually al pitayra, how is a nes godliyosa? So this is a very unusual nes. If so, looking over here, what happened? Hanes to lamakim mitzrayim b'chereya, haseder shenitba venikva ba'avodes habirurim la'yedei atayru hu. What's the seder? What is the standard that's been established? Al pitayda, shani tzaitzis shabegimul klipas atmeis ef shalavaram kim tzarech l'tchaisim cholo. What could you be mevada? What could we elevate? What could we bring into the territory of kedusha? Those things that are in klipas naiga, those things that are in, in, in the rishos in klipas naiga, as Alter Rebbe explains in Tanya, that a yid is able to elevate and use the shem shemayim. But those things that are on Gimel, Klippus, Atmeis, the only thing we can do is completely push it away and stay away from it. That is the only way that we elevate it, by pushing it away. Over here, we're talking about the clip of Mitzrayim. The clip of Mitzrayim is Gimel, Klippus, Atmeis, that has to be completely eradicated from the world. So if so, al pizeh, bakoshas, b'choyre Mitzrayim, when the Bechayrim of Mitzrayim, which represent the strength of Mitzrayim themselves, are requesting that the Yidin should be sent out of Mitzrayim. And when the Mitzrayim are fighting for this, they themselves are fighting for this. Even, looking, even though looking at it from the perspective of, of seeing the natural chain of events, it makes sense why they were fighting. They weren't doing it l'shma. They were doing it because they were afraid for themselves, for their own life. But nevertheless, who shinui betevet the kedusha, 
Looking at it from the perspective of Taita, the boundaries and the standards that there are al Taita, that the elevation process, the transformation that you can do in Velt, could only reach to Klippus Neige and not into Gimel Klippus Atmeis. In this case, when the elevation reaches even to the Bechidim of Mitzrayim, and they themselves are turned around and are transformed and are pushing for the Eden to leave Mitzrayim, that's a change in the nature of Taita. Ulechein hu this is why it's considered to be an unusual nest of nest godl as Al Tareb refers to it in Shulchan Aruch. Alpi, Anal, Yeshleimar. So, based on this, we can now come back to understand the connection <coughs> between the nest that happened on this day, Lamakim Mitzrayim of Chereyam, and the yard site of Miriam. And it's because of the yard site of Miriam that we push off the commemoration of this nest from the day in the Chaydish, Yud Nisan to Shabbos. So now, Pinay Yishloiman, Shebei Zamuroi Shiru Basir Nisan. The two events that happened on this day, Hanes, the Lamakim Mitzrayim of Chereyam. O Misas Miriam, and the day that Miriam passed away. Yeshaych is Beneyam, Mitzatoichen in Yoram. There is a connection if we look at the accomplishment of these two things. And the Rebbe gives the introduction from what it says in Tanya. Isa b'yigeres ha-kaydish. The Rebbe says in the Yigeres ha-kaydish b'biyer maimer azal, explaining what it says in the Gemara. Loma nistuch ha-misas miriam l'parashas para aduma. Why in the Teire does Miriam passing away come right after the parasha of para aduma? Loi malachot to teach you. Ma para mechaperes. Just like the para aduma is mechaper on a person. So to when a tzaddik passes away, it brings a kapara to the world. So the Alter Rebbe there explains the significance of this. The para duma, the mechatos, comes to be metayr, a person that has the highest level of tuma, the tuma of tumas meis. He's the highest level of tumma, much, much lower than just Klippus Neiga. He fell into a place of Gimel Klippus Atmeis. And nevertheless, a Pora Duma could purify him. Kach, Misa Sadikim, when a Tzadik passes away, he brings a Hashpah into the world. Poil Yeshua is Bekerev Oretz. He brings a salvation in the lowest place in the world. Lachaper al Oven Adir, to bring a Kapara for the, for the Havedis of the generation. Av gamal as a dainis shalamata mi noiga. Even premeditated sins, the lowest level of avedis that is much lower than noiga, a tzaddik passes away, he can elevate even those individuals. So now, if so, olafi mashim is bayole based what we explained before in sif beis shay in yin delamakim mitzrayim bevchareyem. What's really the significance of this ness of lamakim mitzrayim bevchareyem? Who should take if a clip of the mitzrayim, the source of the strength of the clip of mitzrayim, the bechareyem. Bikish was c- commanding, or, or that is, demanding and requesting, ubetaykif, and strongly demanding, sheishlucho es Yisrael to send Yidin out of Mitzrayim. Hainish yas et tzivay Hashem, they should finally fulfill what Hashem commanded. Harei zebedugmas misas Miriam. This is similar to misas Miriam, misas and shal tzadikim. Shein yona lehapcha lehapcha sheich lenahira. To transform and elevate the lowest place of darkness to the highest place. Just like lemakim Mitzrayim bevchireyem is taking the strength of Mitzrayim, and they themselves are demanding and requesting the Yiddin should be sent out of Mitzrayim. That's the same thing that's accomplished when Miriam passes away. It's bringing a kapare even to a person that has zdainis, which is much lower even than Gimel Klippus Atmeis. So now if so, the Rebbe explains, now that we see the connection, between the two, Yeshlavaya Gam, Pnimi Yisatam, a deeper reason, Shleikovis Korna Nesel, Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereim, be Yudnissen. Why to commemorate Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereim was not established on Yudnissen? Mitnei Misas Miriam. And the reason being because this is a day that Miriam passed away. So what's the Pshat in this? Mavuer Benigea, Leyomtev Shorosh Hashanah, Shacholiyez Beshabbis. It says, Regarding when Yontif of Rosh Hashanah falls out on Shabbos, she ain't taking be Medina, Mishum Gzeire de Rabbe. So you don't blow Shaifer, and the reason being because there's a Gzeire of Rabbe, Shema Yavirena la Shaifer, the Aldam is Berishus Rabbe. You may come to carry the Shaifer, if we allow you to blow Shaifer on this day, you may come to carry the Shaifer and Rishus Rabbe on Shabbos. 
The Lachayda. So the question that's asking the Maimorim is, Maro Chazal Lakim Mitzvah Saseid the Shoyf Echol Mishum Gzeira the Rabbah Balma. Why are Chazal uprooting such an important mitzvah like blowing Shoyfer just because of this Gzeira that a person might carry? Who might carry? Vale Achshashu Ladyotim Vekali Adas. Simple individual or a light-headed person that doesn't know how to blow shayfer is an amaretz. He's going to be the one that might carry. How can we stop and hold back great tzaddikim and great people fulfilling such a great mitzvah like shayfer? So what's the answer? So the deeper reason that Chassidus gives for this is the The fact that you don't blow shayfer that falls out on Shabbos ain't that dicho you shall take if mitzvah to kiyah shayfer. We're not pushing off the mitzvah of shayfer. Hello, rather shaoz ain't seirach kol kach bet kiyah shayfer. There isn't so much of a necessity for the blowing of shayfer. Ki am shochis and am shochis I did kiyah shayfer and am shochis him beyeim hashabbos mitzvah that's me belit kiyah shayfer. Whatever has to be accomplished through blowing the shayfer. When a shoshana falls out on Shabbos, it's accomplished through the Shabbos without actually blowing the shayfer. This is the hasbur that Chizidus, the famous hasbur that Chizidus gives for a shoshana that falls out on Shabbos. If so, the Rebbe says we can say a similar point regarding the Nes of Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereyem or Misas Miriam and the day that Miriam passes away. Shabiyayim Misas Miriam on the day of the yard set of Miriam ain't tzayrech kol kach bizikaron anes. It's not necessary to commemorate the Nes of Lamaki Mitzrayim of Chereyem. Ki apu'ule shenasas al yidei zikaron al yidei min hagi shabbos agadol hanes. What you're trying to accomplish by commemorating the Ness, and what is commemorating the Ness? The Ness, the Teichen of the Ness is The fact that this Ness was transforming the lowest darkness that the Bechayim of Mitzrayim themselves demanded that Yidin should leave Mitzrayim, this is accomplished already. Nasis, it's accomplished on the yard site of Miriam, Bechlolos, through the yard site of Miriam and fasting on this day. And the Ishaq Sheikh and the that happens on the day that Miriam passes away, like on the day that a tzaddik, or in this case a tzaddikis, passes away and it brings a big kapara to the world. So it's accomplished. It's accomplished on Yud Nisan through this Indian itself. So therefore, you don't need the commemoration of the Makim of Tsaraim of Chereya. But the Rebbe does say in the Sikh Bukhlalus, generally they accomplish the same thing. And the Ha'ara the Rebbe points out it's not exactly accomplishing it fully, and therefore we don't completely push it off. We put it on Shabbos. Instead of being on Yud Nisan, we commemorate it on Shabbos. Similar to what it says regarding Shaifer, that even though we don't blow Shaifer, but you still have to say the Psukim of Shaifer is even when it falls out on a Shabbos. So the Rebbe explained th- through the Sikh over here what's unique about the Ness of Shabbos HaGadol, what's unique about the Ness of Lamakim Mitzrayim B'chireyem, and the connection that it has to the Misa of Miriam. And the point is this union of this Hapchech Shoichel and to elevate from the lowest, from the Teikif of Mitzrayim, from the darkness of Mitzrayim, is what Mark and Mitzrayim of Chereim is about. And it even goes against the standards, so to speak, and the nature of Teire that you can only elevate Klippus Neiga. And here you're elevating even from Gimel Klippus Atmeis. And this is also what's accomplished on the day of Misas Miriam, like the Medrash tells us that it's similar to the Para Aduma, which can elevate even those that are on the lowest level. So after all of this, the Rebbe comes back to explain the connection to what we learn in Parshas Tzav. Now we could also see the explanation of the connection of what we learn in Parshas Tzav to Shabbos HaGadol. Inyin Shivis Yimea what is the, the concept of the Shiva Simei Miluam? The Shiva Simei Miluam were the days when the Mishkan was put up for seven days temporarily, and the Kainim with Moshe Rabbeinu were doing the Aveda there before they put up the Mishkan permanently on Ashkhaydish Nisan. So, what is the meaning of these days of Shiva Simei Miluam? In Parsha Sav, it says by about these days, the Karbanis that were brought in those days. The Al Tareb explains in Lukutatayra in this week's Parsha. The reason why these days are called Miluim, what does the term Miluim mean? To fill, to be full and complete. So, what does this represent? When the world will come to its fullest perfection. The Pasuk says, The light of the moon will be as powerful as the light of the sun. 
she is smalap kimis alavona. The lack of the light of the moon that was taken away from it by creation will be re brought back, lost at Lavoy. Umi ein ze hoye gamke. Somewhat of this took place as well, when they began putting up the Mishkan for the first time. The elevation of Malchus, which represents the Levana, was happening at that time period. And therefore it's called Miluim because this is the beginning of the Milui of the Levana, which is going to be completed, lost at Lavai. So what is this idea of the Levana being completed? The explanation of this idea of the Oyer Levana, the light of the Levana being as powerful as the light of the sun. Mavur Bechsidis, it's explained in the Kutta Taira. The Achsha Mikabela Salavana Oyra Menashemesh. Today, the moon gets its light only as a reflection from the light of the sun. Ula Asid Lavoi, Yilo Oyer Atzmik Ma'er Chama. It'll have its own, it'll be its own source of light like the sun itself. The Hainu meaning, Sha'alavana, Shein Yona Achshav Mekabel, the Levana which today only receives from the light of the sun, Tis Hapech Lies Pchines Oyer Vigili Mitzad Atzma, will be transformed, elevated, and it will be a source of its light, on, of light on its own. Val Derech Zeh B'Sfiris Oyeinus, the same is true also in the Sfiris Lamayla. Sfiris HaMalchus, the Sfire of Malchus, which is represented in the Levana. Shein Yona, the Lesla Migarma Klum, it's the last of the Sfiris and it has nothing of its own, it's just Makabo from before. Tis Hapech V'Tehei Oyer V'Gilui. When Mashiach comes, we will see the source of Malchus, and it itself will become a source of revelation. It'll have its own source of light, a place which had nothing of its own, no source of any gili of its own, will be elevated and be, be a source of light on its own. The Rebbe rings in the order, the Lashon that it says in Titus Chaim, in the Maim of the Mittler Rebbe, in the darkness of the night, it will shine like by day. The light of the Levana will be as powerful as the sun, so the darkness of night will shine like by it will shine then like by day. So this is the same theme of everything we were talking about in the Sikh about Lamakim Mitzrayim Bevchireim and Misas Miriam, the Misa Fatzadik, this Hapchach Sheikhil and to elevate the lowest element of the world. Kain al Derech Zeb and Egeil Hashem Kala Parsha Kula. The same could also be seen in the name of the entire Parsha Tzav. The name of the Parsha is Tzav. Omru Razal, the Gemara says, ain't Tzav, el Avedizora, that we see in, 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 in different places in Psukim that the term Tzav is used regarding Avedizora. Ubiyachad in Pirush, and also there's another thing that it says about Tzav, Ziruz Miyad Oladeiris, to hasten the people to fulfill this mitzvah now and in all future generations, Vav Sheyesh Bechisar and Kis. Even if there's going to be a lack of Chesar uh, and Kis, financial loss, still you should do the mitzvah bezrizis. Lamalis rotz Hashem, to fulfill the will of the Eibishter. And also the Rebbe says, Ubegematria Kel Adnai. Tzav, which is 96, is Begematria, the combination of the two names of the Eibishter, Kel and Adnai. So on one hand, we see the word Tzav is used in Psukim in the context regarding Avodah Zara. But at the same time, Tzav is also the gematria of Kael and Adnai. And Tzav in our case is being used to be Mezaris, to do the Ratzin of the Eibishter, to do it even if there's Chesar and Kis. So therefore Tzav represents transforming darkness into light. We have similar to this in the Aveda of a person, he Avedis at Tshuva. This is the Aveda of Tshuva, when a person elevates himself and does Tshuva. Shai Deizem is Habchem, Hachoshech, Shalaz Deinis Atzman. You can elevate and transform the darkness of even Zdeinis, Lezachias, to become Zachias, Eir, to become a source of light. So this is the bottom line, this is the connection of Parsha Sav to Shabbos HaGadol, which is, is hapche chashoyche l'nohoyre. That in all three, in the nest of Shabbos HaGadol, the theme is, is hapche chashoyche l'nohoyre. In the Misa of Miriam, it, it accomplishes in is hapche chashoyche l'nohoyre. And in the Parsha, it discusses the Shiva Simei Miluim, which is the beginning of the process of is hapche chashoyche l'nohoyre. And the name Tzav, which is used in the context of Avedizara, and over here is being used for a mitzvah, and as the gematria of Kael and Adnai, is the ultimate, is Hapche Chashoycha L'Nohaira.